How's it going my friends? Back with another video today. I wasn't gonna make one today because Sarah got me sick. I uh, told you guys in the last video that Sarah had, like kind of had the flu and obviously that transferred over to me. So I've been feeling like shit the last few days. I'm kind of coming out of it, thank God, because we have this crazy weekend. Tomorrow, tomorrow's wedding is up in New Hampshire. Then we have one in Massachusetts on Saturday and then uh, Sunday's wedding is in New Jersey, so we have crazy traveling and I'm just like praying that I wake up tomorrow and I feel okay because you know Come hell or high water. I'm gonna be there shooting so I prefer not to have the flu But today I want to do a video real quick on um, Something that I realized I haven't done yet is talk about my detail shots and Detail shots at a wedding are like super super important. It's funny because when you think about shooting a wedding, that's not the first thing that comes to your mind. But in my experience over the years, um, it's a super big part of what the brides want. So you like, it's really good to get good at it. And when I started realizing that brides did want detail shots, it was like a kind of a drag because I was like, ah, I don't really want to take detail shots. But then once I started to get into it, I realized that you can do wicked creative things with rings and different shit like that and it can be different you can really put your own creative spin on it and it can be like a fun thing so now I actually really like I enjoy doing detail shots trying to do something different and creative with every ring um, for every bride and so what I use for my detail shots 100% is this phenomenal lens I recommend that everybody goes out and gets this thing it's a 60 millimeter f 2.8 macro alright this macro lens is so good it's freaking sharp as hell okay now obviously this is a D lens so this does not focus autofocus on the Z bodies so yeah, I have the adapter on it. It does not autofocus, but it doesn't matter because you know, it, with macro stuff anyways, yeah, the, the Z lineup does not have a macro lens. So, you know, people have been kind of bitching about that. But the thing is, is when you're shooting macro, at least for me, I've always, when I've gone out there and I've done detail shots or I've done just macro, taking pictures of flowers and bugs and stuff like that, I always use manual focus anyways. I don't know anybody who really autofocuses with, with macro stuff. I mean, I guess, some people do, but for me, I always manual focused anyways. So um, the best thing about this is you can use this with the Z bodies now and we have focus peaking. So you can look right through that viewfinder, use the back screen, whatever you use, and you can see the highlights of exactly what's in focus. And it's it makes focusing so much easier because you don't have to rely on that little dot in the bottom left-hand corner like we used to on DSLRs. You just turn on the peaking. I use, um, I still, you know, I shoot in black and white, so I use the red focus peaking because it really stands out against the black and white. And I could see everything perfectly that's in focus. Focus. This does not have five axis um, IBIS in body image stabilization with the Z6, but it has three axis, so it gives you some stabilization too, which is really nice. And it's a joy to use, it really is. Now, this thing is super, super sharp and it produces beautiful, beautiful bokeh. The background blur is absolutely beautiful with this thing. So, it, you know, with all those things together, I recommend buying it because the thing was only $200. I mean, honestly, you could go out and get a 105 macro or I, God knows how much is the, the Z macro is going to be. I will not be purchasing a Z macro lens because honestly, I love the 60 millimeter plenty. I do not mind if it's a macro lens. I do not mind manual focusing, especially with the focus peaking. So I got what I need in terms of macro. Um, I would encourage you guys to go get a macro lens if you're doing weddings and really start to look at your detail shots differently. Um, I do simple setups, but I do creative things. This shot right here, this shot I shot with the, this 60 millimeter 2.8 and I obviously have the rings set up here and I have um, a little other piece of jewelry in the background right there and that light coming from the side that's just my mag light my flashlight that you guys have I've done many videos on that's showing you guys that I use that all the time um, but you know I angled it correctly the way I wanted it so I could have that kind of like soft really cool light coming from the side but that's just a flashlight and then you know this these two rings were placed right here um, so I have another one, this one right here. This shot is just the, 
um, rings set up with a piece of fabric that Sarah found, like a piece of ribbon and some uh, one of the necklaces in the background. And I used a uh, speed light flash with a snoot on it, with the mag snoot, right, coming from the side. So I just have, it, it, it's off camera right, right here. So, you know, I mean, guys, you can get really, really creative and do mac macro, like, detail shots that are different and you know people love them a lot of the detail shots that i see from wedding photographers look pretty much the same because i think a lot of photographers and weddings they just want to get them over with and get them done and they don't really really you know put effort into them or it put effort into making them like their own or different and i think that's a, a way to kind of separate yourself because when we deliver macro shots like the ones i just showed you um to the brides they fucking love those and they don't expect to get them so, you know, I'm telling you guys, get one of these lenses, okay? They're very, I don't have a ton of things to say other than it's very sharp. <clears throat> it With the Z body, it has three axis stabilization, beautiful background blur. You can use focus peaking for your, for your focusing. Manual focus is not a problem with macros for me anyways. And it's super, super cheap. I mean, the other good thing about this is I throw this thing on my D700 sometimes and I just go out and I shoot, you know, portraits and, and different things, um, you know, because it autofocuses great with the D700. So, you know, it, there's plenty of good ways to use that lens and it's so cheap that I would definitely recommend you buying it. That's, that's a lens that will stay with me forever. And it's kind of one of those under the radar. I mean, uh, people know about it, but I think people would just think that, a, a much more expensive lens would give them better results when it's not true. This lens is phenomenal. I recommend you guys go buy it. Hopefully everybody's having a good day. Hopefully that was helpful. Appreciate all the uh, you know emails and all the comments, everything that you guys have you know contributed to the channel. You guys are fucking great. Anything you guys want me to do a video on or any topics you want me to discuss, just let me know. And like I said in the last video, I got my 85 uh, 1.8S lens. Thank God that's delivered and I'm shooting with it all, all this weekend. So um, I'm going to be doing a comparison video for, between that and the 85 1.4G. That is coming next week. So until next time, guys.